everyone and welcome to this year's FemEng Virtual Outreach Project. We're going to be learning about biomedical engineering and making some faux hands together. My name is Lisa, I'm a third year biomedical engineering student and I'll be your mentor this week. I'm also the outreach convener of FemEng. So what do biomedical engineers do? Well, Biomedical engineers use engineering principles to help solve medical problems. An example of something that an a biomedical engineer would be involved in creating is prosthetics, which are artificial body parts such as a leg, hand or even the heart, which would be given to a patient whose own natural body part is missing or isn't working and needs to be replaced. I don't know if any of you have ever had an x-ray done, but biomedical engineers are also involved in creating technology that, like that, which allows you to see what's going on inside the body. They can also get involved in designing the equipment and scientific processes used to help find out what's wrong with the patient in a field called diagnostics. Another area that biomedical engineers are, get involved in is tissue engineering. This is quite complicated, so I won't go into detail, but it's all about combining materials that come from the lab with natural materials from the body in a way that helps the body part grow better, or maybe even replaces them if need be. Whatever field they're working in, a big part of what biomedical engineers do will be all about designing, building and testing new devices and new equipment that will ultimately help people to feel better. This slide shows some pictures of the things I was talking about here. The picture on the left shows something called an MRI machine, which is another technique used to show medical staff what's going on inside the body. On the right, you can see an example of somebody using a prosthetic to treat a limb deficiency, where they are missing part of one of their legs. Prosthetics is a field of biomedical engineering that we're going to be thinking a little bit more about today as we go into our craft activity next. Today we are going to be making foam hands, just like the one that I have here. As we do this, I hope that you'll be able to learn a bit about the tendons that are in your hands which are involved in controlling the way that your hand moves. And hopefully you'll be able to see why this is important for biomedical engineers. Before we get started, I want to give you a little bit of background about tendons and what they are. Tendons are a part of your body that connect bones to muscles. And in each finger, you have one that runs from the top of your bone up here, down through the fingers through your palms and connecting to a muscle in your forearm. It runs through a protective cage called a tendon sheath. The tendon runs down beside the bones in your fingers and these are called phalanges. In each of your finger you have three of these. One, two, three. You can see them if you bend your finger. And in your foot and in your thumb, sorry, you have two. One, two. These bones are connected to the bones that run through the palm of your hand and connect to your wrist. See if you can feel them in your hand. So we have these tendons that run through our fingers and connect to the muscles down here. It's this muscle that allows you to bend your fingers and to make a fist. This muscle contracts, meaning that it bunches together and gets a bit smaller. And this pulls on your tendons pulls them down and allows you to make a fist. Try and see if you can feel this happening when you bend your own fingers and your forearm. Can you feel the muscle getting tighter and pulling? So you can see in my arm as it happens. You can see this really clearly on the model of your we are about to make. These strings here are the tendons and the straws are representing the tendon sheath. When I pull on one of the strings, just like your muscle would, the finger bends. But why is this important to biomedical engineers? Well, biomedical engineers could be involved in creating a prosthetic hand, which is a replacement hand for someone who doesn't have one. To 
To do this, they would need to know all about how the hand works in order to be able to create something that works in a similar way to the real hand. Let's get started with making our hands. Here's a list of all the things that you'll need. I'm using craft foam because it's really good and flexible and it bends right back when you bend the finger. But if you don't have that, you can use card like this and um, it just might not spring back you will also need some straws. Probably going to need about five, but it might be handy to have a few extra on hand in case you need some more. Um, then you also need some string, some tape, and then you'll also need a ruler, scissors, and a pencil to draw your outline. You're also going to need something to help you hold up the hand so that you can pull the string. I'm using a pencil here, you could also use the handle of a wooden spoon or a chopstick, but don't worry because you can get this back, it will be really easy to take off once you're finished with that. So if you don't have any of those things, I suggest you pause the video now and go and get them. Other than that, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is take my piece of craft foam and draw around my hand. The next thing I need to do is cut out the hand. Be careful using the scissors and if you need to, ask for help. And here I have my hand template. The next thing that we're going to do is make the tendon sheet. In reality, this runs all the way down from your finger and isn't in chunks. It's flexible and so it's all one piece. But we're going to do it in little sections just so that we can still bend the hand and be able to see what happens when you pull on the tendon. So what you're going to do is take a straw and measure out one centimetre using your ruler. It doesn't have to be exact, but just something around this size. Then you're going to cut along the line you've made so that you just have a little bit of straw left. You're going to do this 14 times to make the, the pieces of the tendon sheath that we're going to stick onto the hand. Now I'm going to cut it up. of straw onto the hand next to where the phalanges would be. So you've got 14, that means there are three in each finger and two in your thumb. As you can see here, so there's two there, one, two, three in each finger. Make sure to leave a gap between them when you stick them on so that the finger can still bend on. That's why we've cut it into pretty short pieces. I'm going to use tape to do this, but you can use glue if you want. You could use any type of tape, I'm using masking tape. Now I've cut up lots of little strips of tape, I'm going to use them to stick these pieces of straw onto the hand. Be sure to leave a small gap at the top of the finger as well so that we have room to secure the string at the top. There we are. 
Now that the small bits of straw are attached to the hand next to where the phalange bones would be, we're going to add straws to the palm of the hand. We're going to put five in next to where each of the bones in our hands are. And these are going to act as the tendon sheath that runs through the palm. So because all of our hands are different sizes, this bit of straw will be a different size for everybody. But we want to make sure that it covers most of the palm. You need to leave a gap between the, the start of the straw in the palm and the end of the straws in your fingers. And it should cover most of the hand. So I'll make mine and I'll show you what that looks like. This is the size of the straw that I'll be using for the thumb. Now I'm going to make straws to go in the palm for each of the other fingers. Now that I have my straws cut out, I'm going to secure them in place with some masking tape leaving about a one centimetre gap between the bottom of the straw on the finger and the top of the straw on the pan. Now we've got all the straws attached to the hand. The next thing we're going to do is cut the string that will run through the fingers acting as a tendon sheet. It's not too important exactly how long this is, but as a rough guide, we want it to be about 30 centimetres long. My rule is 30 centimetres, so I'm going to make it the same length as that. have our five pieces of string. The next thing we're going to do is thread the string through the straws on the pan. To do this, we're going to cut a little bit of tape. It doesn't need to be too big. And we're going to use this tape to secure the top of the piece of string, the top of one, one of the fingers. I'm going to start here on the pinky. Make sure you tape it on so the string is pointing down. The next thing we're going to do is thread the string through the straws. This can be a little bit fiddly, but just take your time and ask for help if you need it. So here I'm going to take the end of the string that's not attached to the finger and push it through the first straw. And then I'm going to continue doing that until it's through all the four pieces of straw on this finger. There we are, that's one finger done and it can bend now. I'm now going to do that to the other four fingers. Now I have a piece of string threaded through all four fingers and the thumb. The next step is to be to stick on my handle. I'm just going to use the pencil that I was drawing with earlier and I'm going to tape it between two of the two of the bones here on my hand. And 
here's my finished product. See how pulling on the strings allows me to bend each of the fingers in turn. I hope you enjoyed making your model hand and that you learnt something about biomedical engineering and how the hand works. That's all from me today. I just want to remind you that you can get in touch with any of us at our email address, which is femeng at guefs.org.uk. We'd love to hear any questions that you have and see some pictures of what you've been up to. I hope that you all have a great week and I'm looking forward to meeting you on our video call soon.